and welcome back to Hypnosis Today, where we explore how people are using hypnosis to achieve remarkable things. If you've just joined us, we have as our second guest, Doug Moyer. Now, Doug is an honors graduate of HMI College of Hypnotherapy. He is also our distance education tutor. He has a private practice in Long Beach, California, as well as one in Tarzana, California. And he has with him, his client, and my other very special guest, Michelle. Please help me welcome my guests. Well, Michelle, I'm going to start with you. What brought you in uh, to see a hypnotherapist? Uh, I had some free-floating anxiety. For those of us who don't know what that is, can you explain what free-floating anxiety is? It's just anxious in general. It mm -hmm. wasn't attached or related to a specific event or a specific area of my life just generated it on a continuing basis. Wow. So Michelle, what made you decide to use hypnotherapy as an intervention? I was at the Bodhi Tree bookstore before it closed, and a gentleman by the name of E.J. Katigbeck, who was also a student here, yes. um, was offering some seminar on hypnotherapy. And I attended. I found it fascinating. And he offered the attendees like a 60 or 90 minute session with him at HMI. Wow. And so I, I took him up on the offer. I came in. I loved it. I was connected to the interns and fortuitously um, arrived at Doug, which couldn't be a better fit. Well, I always say there are no accidents, and uh, the universe is always conspiring in your favor. <laughs> and so you got hooked up with Doug through our resident intern program. And so, Doug, I'm going to go with you now. Can you tell me what kind of an induction you used for free-floating anxiety, anxiety that didn't really seem to be attached to any particular trigger time or specific cause. Certainly. What I found with people that are experiencing anxiety, it's best to get them into hypnosis quickly, comfortably, and deeply as quickly as possible. And so what we did with Michelle, her induction began with an infirmed arm raising, which mm -hmm. we converted to hypnosis, yes. and further deepened that with a progressive relaxation, deepening it further with a descending staircase technique. You know, that makes sense, because with free-floating anxiety, a way that hypnotherapists might frame it is that you're already in a hypersuggestible state, so in a way, you had to get Michelle deeper Absolutely. than she walked in the door. Absolutely. So Absolutely. What, what did you do then? Uh, once, once Michelle was comfortable, we progressed into some guided imagery, which Michelle responded very well to, uh -huh. taking her to places, uh, examples of places where she could recall and assimilate some of her past strengths and experiences of quick success. So even with the anxiety in hypnosis, were you able to access the memories of when you have felt confident, calm, and successful? I was, and the interesting thing about that experience is I. I would not have been able to replicate that if I had just conjured it, you know, in my waking state. If I was thinking back on all the times I was successful in my life, I probably would have minimized it or, uh -huh. I don't know, not recalled it with such specificity. So now once you got her into that state and she was able to recall it, what did you do to be able to capture that state and bringing, as Michelle said, into a full waking state? Well, in hypnosis, I presented Michelle suggestions which allowed her to go back to that state at any given time, reinforcing the, the fact that she had the ability to choose how to respond when she was in situations that might result in anything close to anxiety. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to work well for her. That concept of choice, what do you think about that? It's fascinating. I mean, so much happens before we become aware uh, in that split second between when you know there's a stimulus and then you respond mm -hmm. and i was just reactive i was reactive to everything i didn't realize that i had the option to choose my path to choose my response so may i ask what type of things now that you reflect on it in that nanosecond what type of things used to cause the anxiety well, it's free-floating, so everything. <laughs> so everything. Um, but, I mean, there are things that made me more anxious than I was at other times. A job interview, for example. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, or a first date, or mm. meeting a bunch of new people. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm able to say to myself, well, first of all, there's some kind of precognitive 
impact that this therapy has, where before I even have the thought, ordinarily I'd immediately feel anxious. Uh -huh. Now I don't even have that. And then the thought is, okay, I feel anxious. What am I going to do about it? What do I choose to do about it? So what techniques are you using when you choose not to go into fight or flight, where that's when you have the rapid heartbeat and the breathing? We'd call it anxiety. I take some deep, slow breaths. Mm -hmm. I actually hear Doug's voice. He has the most soothing voice. I don't know if you noticed this. And just this warmth and love and support. And yes. so I, I hear him in my head, actually. <laughs> I love it. Now, with anxiety, did you use any cognitive behavioral techniques in the talk part of your session? Not so much, but we did do a lot of work with breathing and the importance of breathing and how taking deep breaths, holding the breaths, releasing the breaths, brings you into the now and in the, into the present and attempts to create that homeostasis once again mm -hmm. and how beneficial that simple technique can be. Yes. And did you learn how to do any self-talk for those situations where you pretty much knew what the trigger was, the job interview, the first date, meeting a bunch of people, being on stage in a web TV show for us. <laughs> I had been exposed to affirmations, the whole world of affirmations uh -huh. before this experience, and um, I attempted to repeat these positive statements to myself. How'd they that work out for you? They did not <laughs> have the same impact then they, they do now. I believe them. So he has kind of... Um, opened me up to actually um, having the conviction that I am powerful, I am capable, I am okay, the world will provide for me. Yes. And so I take these deep breaths and I repeat these positive things to myself and sometimes I close my eyes and I return yes. to the images that he's provided. So knowing the affirmations before, before you experienced hypnotherapy, you would know them with your logic but you wouldn't feel them with your physical body. Exactly. How exactly. did you get from the logic, which hypnotherapists know is about 12% of the whole mind, the whole consciousness, down into the 88%, which is the subconscious mind? Making, making Michelle aware of the power of being present in the present, both in suggestion as in, and cognitively, I think had some great impact on her ability to cope with anything that might come her way. Plus the fact, Michelle has a history of a lot of successes that we were able to draw upon to reinforce the state. I love that. Now, you had never heard of hypnotherapy or considered hypnotherapy until you went to the Bodhi tree. Right. Is that, uh, that's true, huh? That's accurate, yeah. So what would you say to someone who was skeptical or even afraid of hypnotherapy? You have absolutely nothing to lose. Um, I wouldn't just say try hypnotherapy, I would say try Doug. Um, <laughs> I love he's, that. He's pretty oh. miraculous, it's true. Uh, but I have had all sorts of therapeutic tools at my aid in the past, and this has proved indispensable. What do you think the difference is between what Doug did and some of the other interventions that you've had? It works. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best endorsement, by the way, that I've ever heard. Oh. And the other ones seem to kind of exist again, just up in the conscious mind, the 12%. Right. But not penetrate into feeling, not into just a fact, into a feeling. Yeah. And then you're able to use it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Constantly. whenever you choose mm -hmm. to respond in a different way instead of reacting, responding. Well, I heard someone recently say that the quality of life is not how you act, but it's how you react. I love that. That's kind of interesting. And uh, it sounds like those are some of the things that you learned, not only learned, but you practice since your work with Doug. Well, Doug, I know that everyone is going to want to learn how to use hypnosis for free-floating anxiety or anxiety that has a known trigger or antecedent. We're going to want to learn how to use it in our practice, or maybe there's even someone right now who's watching who has some anxiety and like to come in and learn sure. those very valuable techniques. And I know that they can contact you at Doug Moyer at HMIGrads.com. Well, it appears that we're out of time for today. I want to thank Doug and his very special and wonderful guest, uh, Michelle, <laughs> for coming on the show and sharing both of your experiences. 
and I want to thank my studio audience and those at home who are watching. My name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I hope you will join us next time when we meet more people and explore how they are using hypnosis today. Please stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up for you on HMI Web TV. That's Hypnotherapy Television 24-7. explore how people are using hypnosis to achieve remarkable things. If you've just joined us, we have as our second guest, Doug Moyer. Now, Doug is an honors graduate of HMI College of Hypnotherapy. He is also our distance education tutor. He has a private practice in Long Beach, California, as well as one in Tarzana, California. And he has with him, his client, and my other very special guest, Michelle. Hi. Please help me welcome my guest. Well, Michelle, I'm going to start with you. What brought you in uh, to see a hypnotherapist? Uh, I had some free-floating anxiety. For those of us who don't know what that is, can you explain what free-floating anxiety is? It's just anxious in general. It mm -hmm. wasn't attached or related to a specific event or a specific area of my life. I just generated it on a continuing basis. Wow. So, Michelle, what made you decide to use hypnotherapy? Welcome back to Hypnosis Today, where therapy is an intervention. I was at the Bodhi Tree bookstore before it closed, and a gentleman by the name of E.J. Katigbeck, who was also a student here, yes. um, was offering some seminar on hypnotherapy. And I attended. I found it fascinating. And he offered 